Hey YouTubers, Glenda here. Um, wanted to share with y'all something that uh, really is on my heart today a lot. Um, I took the day off today just to uh, to rest and also to spend some time with God and to pray uh, because I really felt a need to draw close to Him. Um, and I've been reading a book um, about deliverance. Uh, it's by Mary K. Baxter. It's called The Divine Revelation of Deliverance for anybody who wants to check it out. And I found something in that book last night that um, really made me stop and think. In the book, Mary K. Baxter and some other people are um, in agreement, and they have all agreed that they're going to intercede for this one person that they knew that had gotten addicted to drugs really bad, used to do whatever, minister or whatever, and was then, by then, had gotten addicted to drugs, had a spirit of addiction on him, or whatever, was living in the streets, uh, and just had, you know, seemed to have lost control of his life. So, they all decided they were going to intercede for him. So, she, she uh, begins to fast and goes into prayer this one day for this uh, gentleman, and begins to pray and intercede, and all of a sudden this heavy burden came on her from the Lord to intercede for other people who were addicted. And so she continued praying in the Spirit and travailing and everything, and she got up to refresh herself at one point and noticed it was like, I don't know, 6 o'clock in the evening or something like that, and she went back and kept praying because she didn't feel that uh, if you're an intercessor, you know that you pray until you feel that release in your spirit that God says, okay, it's done. And so she kept praying and kept praying. And later on, she got up to refresh herself again. And I guess she was laying on the floor or something. And it was like midnight. But she still didn't feel the release, so she kept interceding. And she continued to pray just for hours and hours. So she's obviously a true intercessor and has made many trips to heaven, has made many trips to hell. And about... I think uh, 3 o'clock in the morning, she got up to refresh herself again, but still no release. So she said her body was tired, but she kept praying. And at 6 o'clock in the morning, she got a vision. And in this vision, she saw the gates of heaven fly open and this army of angels come out. And she said they were like 30 feet tall and they had on this beautiful armor and they had swords and there was fire shooting out of the swords at the top and the bottom. She continued to watch and apparently these visions went on for hours. Uh, and what a tremendous reward for hours and hours of intercession to see something so incredible. She saw the angels come to heaven, I mean come from heaven, come down to the earth. And um, as she was interceding, somewhere along the point when she was interceding, she saw people in the spirit. She saw uh, like this boy that didn't have a shirt on and he was being beaten with a club in an alley. Just this guy that was just beating him to death, with clubbing him to death. And she saw in the spirit that the man who was doing the beating was demonized. She saw people in bars that were drunk. She saw people in their house that were addicted to drugs. She saw people all over the place in all these uh, situations where addiction had them bound or it had affected their lives. So she sees the angels come down and they come to earth and this army of angels disperses and it goes into the parks and the cities and people's houses. And all of a sudden she sees them breaking the chains off of these people. Um, and she sees, uh, she sees this man who had demons on him in a bar, and he was sitting there drinking, and the angel drug the demon off one shoulder and off the other shoulder and off the leg or wherever they were. And then the man was like, what am I doing here? He gets up, he walks out of the bar, drops to his knees, and gives his life to God right there. Um, and she saw more and more of these. This went on for hours. A couple of weeks later, or a month later or something, she is ministering. And people start walking up to her, and this goes on for a couple of months. And they say, wow, the, the strangest thing happened. I was in a bar, and I was so drunk, and I walked outside, and all of a sudden I was sober, and I gave my life to God, and my life has completely changed now. Apparently, while she was interceding, God was taking her prayers, and not just using them for the man that you know was the main focus of their group intercession, but also for all these other people that she didn't even know because of this burden for addiction for people to be set free from addiction and did all these miracles and then showed her and then she actually got to meet a lot of the people that she believes are the same people she was interceding for that night and didn't know. And I said all that to say this. You know, we all pray. If we believe in God, we all pray. Are we doing everything we can do? 
Now, most of us can't or don't have time to pray, you know, 12, 14, 16 hours straight through like she did. And that's an awesome blessing that she can do that. But can we pray five minutes? Can we pray half an hour? Can we pray an hour a week? You know, we see all this stuff going on in the world. We see people in other countries who don't have enough food or who don't have the gospel preached to them. We see addiction in our streets causing homelessness. We see people who have lost jobs and houses and, and, you know, their whole life has just gone down the tubes. Are we doing our part as Christians? Are we praying for them? If they can be delivered through prayer, we don't have to go cast the demons out. Are we doing that so that they can get deliverance? And, you know, I pray for our mind safe family members a lot. Uh, that's a big part of my prayer time. And I believe that we have a responsibility to do that. I would not be saved if my saved family members had not prayed me into the kingdom. Because I was running hard from God. Had no intentions of ever going in that direction. And they prayed until, you know, God reached through the veil and touched me. And I gave my life to Him. Are we returning that to someone else? Are we praying for our cities? What's, you know, I've been praying for a word for 2011. What's coming uh, in 2011 is, um, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff coming into the world. Not just 2011, you know, there'll be some stuff. But I think it will, like, labor pains get increasingly worse as we go on. People will die and go to hell if they don't find Jesus. Between now and the end of the world, there's no question. People you know are going to die and go to hell without Jesus. You may be the only person standing in the gap. And I just wanted to make this video to say, are we doing what we can do? Is there more that we can do? You know, we don't have 12 hours a day to intercede or whatever, but can we do some more than we're doing? You know, can we fast one day a month? Can we pray an hour, you know, a day or two hours on the weekend or something to intercede for the people that God has such a heart for? that may not have anyone to pray for them or not enough praying for them to break through the darkness so that God can send the angels and deliver them. You know, I got to thinking about, the Lord has been speaking to me about this town that I live in. And, you know, I live in like a little one horse town. It's, it's a, a bedroom community north of Dallas, but there's not much here. And, you know, I've asked God for a year and a half, why did you send me here? But the Lord has let me know that he has a plan for this town. And so I'm starting to intercede for this town. And I got to thinking, I thought, you know, I don't know anybody here. I have like one friend here. And no one knows I'm a Christian. No one knows that I do deliverance. No one knows that I would pray for them in a heartbeat if I knew that they needed help. So I decided to let them know. And I went um, online and I bought some shirts to let them know. Y'all can see one of them. I'm wearing it. It says, does not play well with demons. I got another one that says, I'm sold out to Jesus who owns you. And then I got another one that says, um, I believe God still heals. Want to pray? And for anybody who's interested, I got them at uh, www.fellowshipofthemartyrs.com. Um, and it's really interesting to wear one of these shirts into a store. Because the first one I wore into a store, people, I saw these people looking and whispering to each other like, like, they wanted to come over and ask for prayer or they knew someone who needed prayer or something like that. And I thought, hey, these might actually have an effect. So I'm going to start wearing my shirts whenever I go out. Just to let other people know if they need someone to pray for them. You know, I'll, I'll stop whatever I'm doing and do that. And if there are more of us, just think if there were five people in every town who did that who made themselves available to pray for people who need prayer. Um, let's say that a hundred of us committed an hour a week to intercede for the lost in our cities. What do you think God would do? What do you think would happen? God really has a heart for the lost. Obviously, he sent Jesus to destroy the works of the devil. And it's not his will that any should perish. There are thousands and, and millions of people on earth who have no one to pray for them. There's no Christians in their family. There's no one to pray for them. How are they going to get help? if they don't, You know, somebody's got to pray. Before something happens, somebody's got to pray. And I think I'm getting close to running out of time, but 
anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there and see what you guys thought, because I've really been thinking about, it really made an impact on me to read that in that book that, you know, she interceded and interceded and interceded, and God sent a whole band of warrior angels out of heaven to go set a bunch of people free because she prayed, you know? And there were other people praying, sure, but, you know, one can put a thousand to flight. Come on, guys. You know, we need to do our part. We need to try to set some time aside for God and do what's on His heart. Not, you know, go to Him and ask Him for what we want, but let's see what He wants. But I'm out of time. God bless you guys.